All right, what we have is an Arduino Nano. It's on my home-built breakout board. And the idea here is to use a Max 7219 8-digit LED display. Up here, I have a 8-digit 7-segment LED display bar based on the Max 7219. Down here is a generic LCD display, two line by 16 characters, and it's connected with a 74164 shift register. Both of these devices use shift registers and very similar software routines. I'm here to discuss those software routines. All right, this video started out. I didn't, I'm not addressing the temperature sensors over here, but I still have the Arduino Nano and I have this eight digit LED display. It has three input connections, a power and a ground, and it uses the Max 7219. This device has a 16-bit shift register. Why is that important? Let's look at, since we're discussing shift registers, let's discuss a few devices that use shift registers, and you may be surprised to find out that they all use basically the same software routine. I covered this briefly on initializing the 7219, but I'll go over it briefly again. You place a data bit on data in. You take this clock, it goes from low to high to low. The bit is shifted in. You put in another bit, clock it again, do this 16 times, and you what you've done is a serial to parallel conversion. You've input the data in 16 serial bits, and now it's used in a parallel form with the rest of the circuit. Four bits for an address decoder and eight bits data that's, that produces what you actually see on the seven segment displays. So we're, so think of this again. This is a serial to parallel shift register, 16 bits. As I explained in an earlier video, I use two eight bit serial shifts. You may recognize the 74HC595 because guess what? It has an identical shift register pretty much except it's 8 bits. Data in, you clock from low to high to low. The bit is shifted in one bit at a time, 8 times. Then you'll send this um, latch clock, I believe it's low to high to low. You have a latch. Then you um, go low on output enable and your eight data bits show up out here. Again, this is a serial to parallel conversion. If you want to look down at the internals a little bit on this particular device, uh, let's move on down, down, down. There it is. Uh, pull this back a bit for you but you'll see it's there is your enable there is your latch clock what you're going to worry and this is your data in goes into a D flip-flop most of these have D flip-flops and the Q output goes to the following D Q output goes to the following D and you will find that the clock, and in this case this has a reset, are connected in parallel. And each clock pulse you will move a bit, one bit at a time, down into the serial register. This is the 74164, which is also another 8-bit um, serial to parallel shift register. In this case, you have a master clear. If you send it low, it sets everything to all the outputs to low. I usually just tie that off to high because I don't use it. I'll tie A and B together. This is where I put my data bit. 
the clock will go from low to high to low. First bit is shifted here, do it again. That bit is shifted here and another bit shifted in. Do it eight times and you have eight outputs. Again, this went from serial to parallel. Where would I use this? This is my L LCD display that I tied into this. I've blown it up so you can see it. It's a 74164, and I'm using essentially four pins off my Arduino. One is for clock. I tie the clear to VCC and leave it. I have one clock pin, one data pin, and then I have RS and E. That, get, that means I use four Arduino I.O. pins, and I have complete programmable control of this LCD display. I can put in full bytes. I don't have to fool with this half byte nonsense. And the best part of all this, I don't need any Arduino libraries. None. Zero. And the same loop routines work in Python. They work in C on the Raspberry Pi. You name it. They all work the same. Here is my Arduino sketch. In the case in this latest bunch of videos, I have connected the Max 7219. All three of my out pins are outputs as far as that goes. Okay, that's not the routine I need. This is my serial routine, SSR out. And I send a byte to it called val. This is an 8-bit serial shift routine. I start with a for loop that start goes from 1 to 8. So that gives me 8 iterations. All right. I take val and I will bitwise and it with 0x80. Why do I do this? Because in all of the devices that I just listed, you have to input the most significant bit first. So I'm checking bit 7. By anding it with 0x80, I'll end up with either 0x80 or I'll end up with 0, one or the other. That's all I can get. I'm going to check the state of temp. If temp equals 0x80, then I know the bit is high, and I'm going to do a data bit out high. If it's zero, else I'm going to have the data bit low. Here is my clock, which is normally at zero. The clock will go high. The clock will return to low. And, and I will shift the entire variable val one place left. So if you are inputting most significant bit first, you check the most significant bit with a bitwise AND, decide whether you're going to put a high or low on the output, you're going to initiate your clock pulse, um, low to high to low, and then you're going to shift left one bit. And by the time you do eight iterations, you would have gone through and checked all eight bits. That's it. That's the whole routine. This is what works on all of the devices, be it the 74164, the uh, Max 7219, the 74HC595. They all use the same routine. Data bit, low, high, low, shifts it in. That's the whole routine. Now, if you're having to, I'm just going to put this down here in an example. This is an example of what would what it would look like if I'm having the least significant bit shifted out first. The only thing I got to do is take val and bitwise and it with zero one. Okay, if it makes you feel better, zero x zero one because I'm checking bit 0 and not bit 7. 
And it's either going to come back as high or low. Doesn't matter. Because temp is going to be a 1 or a 0. Data bit is going to be directly whatever value temp is. Clock high, clock low. And you shift right 1. When you're going least significant bit, you're going to end it with a 0, whatever the byte is, with 0, 1. And then you're going to shift right once. Same thing as divide by 2. After 8 iterations, all 8 bits would have been output to the appropriate serial device. So, that's how serial shift routine works. And I, I got news for you. I think mine works better than the one that comes with uh, as a library or whatever it is with Arduino. Mine works better. It's more flexible and I can do more with it. So, I hope this was useful. Catch some of the other videos in this section and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.